thought I'd make a quick video that looked at the three different types of percentage yield questions that are typically asked on A-level chemistry papers. So this is the first one, it's probably the simplest type of percentage yield question. If you want to have a go at this, obviously just pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so make a start. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk you through the classic mistake. I see this a lot as an A-level chemistry teacher. So a student would literally just look at the two numbers in the question, 2.01 from 2.30, and just express that as a percentage. So the answer would be that, but unfortunately that is completely wrong. What we need to do is work out the actual moles of product and then divide that by the theoretical moles of product that could have been formed from the reaction and express those as a percentage. So we'll go through that now. So our starting point is looking at the amount of ethanol that we've got in the reaction and turn that into moles. So the moles of ethanol that we're starting with is mass over MR, 0.05 moles. And then we look at the mole ratio in the equation. So it's a one to one ratio. So theoretically, if it was 100% yield, if there was complete conversion, you would get the same number of moles of ethanoic acid as you've got of ethanol because of the ratio. So our theoretical moles of ethanoic acid is 0.05 as well. So the next thing we do is we look at the actual mass of ethanoic acid that was produced and turn that into moles. So these are going to be our actual moles of ethanoic acid, mass over MR, 0.0335. And it's these numbers here that we express as a percentage. So we take the actual moles, 0.0335, divide by the theoretical moles, 0.05, and multiply those by 100. So you can see that's coming out with the percentage yield for this reaction at 67%. Okay, so there's the second one. Again, if you want to pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. So the first thing I'm doing is working out how many moles of calcium carbonate we're using in the reaction, 12.4 grams, divided by the MR, 0.124 moles to three significant figures. So the next thing I'm doing is working out the theoretical moles of calcium oxide possible, one to one ratio. So we should expect to get, if there was a 100% yield, 0.124 moles of that as well from that ratio. Now the next thing you can do, you can either plug the numbers into the formula and rearrange it, or sometimes it's better to just think your way through now. So we, we should get 0.124 moles, but we know that the yield's only 90%. So we're actually gonna get 90% of that value. So all we do is 90 over 100, or 0.9 times 0.124. So we're actually gonna get that many moles to three significant figures of the calcium oxide. So the actual mass of calcium oxide is just the moles times the MR, 6.25 grams to three significant figures. Okay, so here's the third one. So again, if you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so make a start. So the moles of sodium sulfate that we want to make, mass over MR, 0.0704 to three significant figures. The full number, by the way, is in the calculator, but I'm reporting to three significant figures. Now, the thing to stress here is that is from this 56% yield. So the next thing I'm doing is working out, well, how many moles of sodium hydroxide would I need? So it's obviously two times the moles of sodium sulfate, three significant figures, 0.141. But remember, the full number's in my calculator. We're still at that 56% yield. So this is the tricky bit now. So this is a reverse percentage calculation effectively. So what I'm doing is I'm scaling up to what I would need if it was 100% yield. Remember it's not, it's only 56. But we are gonna need more moles of sodium hydroxide so that the sort of drop down to 56% can happen. So we're scaling up to what you would need for 100% yield. So all I'm doing is dividing the moles by the 56, so by the yield, multiplying by 100. So that takes it up to 0.251 moles to three significant figures. And now all I need to do is multiply the moles by the MR of sodium hydroxide to turn it into grams, which to three significant figures is coming out at 10.1 grams. 